Okay, grade 10. So today we're going to be drawing a drawing techniques drawing. So this is obviously just to get you guys used to how to draw and stuff like that. So you'll see I've got a um, question over here. You're going to have to redraw it at a scale of 1 to 1, meaning using the same measurements. Okay, so sometimes you guys are given an S point, which is a starting point, and sometimes you aren't. So this drawing here doesn't have a starting point. That's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just going to help you practice for when you're doing your exams and say you don't get a starting point. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to draw a line going straight down. I'm just taking this line over here because for me it makes the most sense given that we have three main little drawings. So we have a hexagon, this little circle over here, this little circle over here. So for me that's the main area where a lot of things are happening. Okay. And then you are going to draw a line at the bottom over here where your drawing ends. And then you'll see you're given a measurement of 70 and 50. So you can make lines at 70 and 50. And the reason why you're doing that is so that we can obviously get the additional measurements that we need um, on the paper without having to draw extra extra lines. So to draw both the lines at once just makes things a lot easier for you. Okay, so we are going to start off by just taking this across over here and this across over here. So that's a bit skewed. Let me do that again. And let me just do these a little bit darker for you guys so that you can obviously see where the lines are happening. My apologies for how big that one line came out. Okay, so I'm going to start here with the circle where we've got a radius of 10 followed by a radius of 20. Okay, so you're going to take your compass. You're going to get a radius of 10, which will obviously be one centimeter and from that point you are going to draw a circle so my lead is just a little bit lighter than my pencil so if you guys don't see it i do apologize i'm going to go over it a couple of times just to make sure that you can see it and then we're going to do the next step and that is take a radius of 20. okay and we are going to get our semicircle. If you guys want, just sometimes when you hold your compass at a little bit of an angle, it actually makes it easier for you to draw. So instead of holding it completely straight, hold it at a little bit of an angle. It will help you guys keep your compass steady. Okay, so now we've got this over here. I would like to get the hexagon in. I'm going to do this one now because I know a lot of people struggle with the hexagon. Um, and it's better for you guys to know it now in grade 10 than not be sure by the time you get to grade 11. So the length of the compass is a length of 40. So from this line here, at the bottom, you're going to take your compass with 40. You're going to lightly make a circle. Okay. And then you're going to take your compass. At the edge of the circle, of the semicircle, you're going to make a little mark like that. And you're going to do the same on the other side. Okay. And the reason why is because that actually gives you the hexagon without having to use your 60 degree ruler to draw it. So for me, this is e an easier method. It's a lot quicker as well. Okay. So then once you've done that, you're going to draw in your sides just like this over here. And like that over there and there you see you've got your hexagon in already so now if you look at the drawing sheet you'll see that the edge of the hexagon actually connects to the edge of the circle over there and so what you're going to do is you're going to line them up with your ruler there's no specific measurement for this one this one is just one of those measurements where you look at it and you've got to kind of fill in the, the information yourself okay so so far what you have should look like this Okay, so based on this drawing, if you have a look here, we have a lot more going on, but it looks like we need these measurements to get the rest. So it makes sense for us to get this part over here. So we are going to start off again by taking a measurement of 10 or a radius of 10. And once you have got that radius, you are going to draw 
a little semi-circle like this over here again mine is just a little bit lighter so I'm going to go over it a few times to make sure that obviously you can see what I'm doing okay then you see we've got a measurement of 42 so we are going to take our ruler and we are going to take a measurement of 42 just like this over here and then once we have done that we are going to draw a nice construction line over here so we can make the next semicircle so you know that even though this semicircle has another measurement it will obviously be a radius of 10 because the lines touch the other circle with a radius of 10. so again you're going to take your compass and you are just lightly going to draw in your semicircle once more okay and it should look like this over here once you have done that you are going to grab your edges and you're going to connect them so that it should look like this over here all right so now that you have this we are getting closer and closer to finishing the drawing so we are going to take a measurement of 30 from the center line by the circle over here so we are going to measure 30 and we are going to make a light construction line going up All right, and it should look like this over here. Then if you have a look at the edges over here, now that we've got our 30 measurements, you'll see that there's a length of 40 and it stops at the edge over there and it stops just where the corner is going to turn. So we're gonna assume, okay, because this is the middle line, it's 20, 20, because the sides are obviously equal. So we are going to do a measurement of 20 on this side over here and a measurement of 40 on that side over there. All right, and then you can just draw a solid line in to show that both bits are connected. Okay, so now this is another part that you need to know for your drawings because a lot of people think it's difficult and I promise you it's really, really not. So you see there's like a whole little arc going on there that says a radius of 60. So what you do when you have something like that is you're going to take your compass and you're going to take the radius that they tell you to take so now we've got a radius of 60. at the edge over here you're going to make a little bow like a little arc for you guys just like that and on the edge over here so where the arc touches the two points that it touches are the two points you're going to use to make your bow so now we're going to use this point over here and we are going to draw that little arc right over there okay once you have done that you're going to put your compass in and you are going to lightly draw or you don't have to draw it in lightly draw it in and you see how it perfectly touches the edges just like this over here okay so now your next step would be to obviously get this radius of 20 in coming from the inside and this one also a lot of people think is difficult and I promise you it's not. So you're going to start off by taking the point that you do currently have where it touches. Because obviously we know we have another point but we don't know where it is yet because we don't know what this angle is. So we are going to take this line across just like that over there. We are going to measure 20 and we are going to make a little mark and then we are going to draw a line going down. And we are going to draw um, or we're going to make a mark at the measurement of 20 so it should be over there so now what you're going to do is you're going to take your compass with a radius of 20 just like this over here and you are going to connect the two pieces together and it should look like this over here and then obviously we know this edge touches the edge of the hexagon and so you are going to connect it together like this over here okay so these drawings are very very easy but it just boils down to practice so the more you practice and the different examples that you practice the better you will get at the end of the day when it comes to these drawings